G'day guys and welcome back to another episode here on the XY Prints on Torque Hub. In this episode what we want to do is get this engine and this trans in that Falcon. Alright guys, so probably should run over some of the stuff that we've got that's going to help us do the job. So if you want to come over here, I'll just sort of run through a couple of the bits and pieces that we chose to get this into the car. So starting off with one of the low car locking trans dipsticks. These are pretty awesome because they've got like a little slide lock uh, and you can put that little dipstick in there before you change in the box or whatever. Also got to lock up the top section as well. So you don't have any risk of it blowing out or leaking or any of that junk. Kind of you know small things like that that make a good day a bad day just because you got oil and crap everywhere um, we're running a turbo smart race port this is very similar to their new uh, gen v uh, blower valves but has a pretty soft spring in it to suit a blower application um, so it seals up nice and quick and this yeah this is a supercharger specific race port. Um, I'll actually put the part number to this in the description below. So if you are doing a supercharged setup and you're looking for a good blow off valve or race port, this would be the one that I would definitely recommend. Um, Australian made as well, which is very important to us. We like that kind of thing. That's it, man. If we like, if you can buy something that's Australian made, we buy it. Yeah, that's it. If for an extra, if it's an extra 50 bucks, I mean, in this case, I think that's a very well priced. Yeah. Unit. Compared to the, the big red pro charger blow off valve that most people would yeah. run it it's it's actually probably half the price yeah that's right it's good value and but even if it was an extra 50 bucks i'd probably choose the australian made version anyway yeah um moving on from there we've got a couple of bits from rod shop um those guys have a youtube channel as well if you want to check that out castlemaine rob shop or castlemaine if you're from victoria shout out to our victorian friends um we got transmount got a cross member here this is to suit I think it suits a multiple amount of uh, transes, but this one will suit a turbo 400 into an XY, which is handy. We've also got the XY Windsor engine mounts here. And then we've got these absolutely stonking heads from Competition Engines. Um, these are their own, I guess, custom made type of extractor, and it's to suit any XR, XY, uh, Windsor, set up whether it be like a 9.2 deck or a 9.5 deck two inch primary extractors coming into their four into one collector um, out to a, a megaphone here three and a half inch outlet i think it is um, slip collector here the best part about them if you've ever tried to put extractors into an xy you know especially on the driver's side super tight when you got the steering box and everything there it can be a real pain in the ass um, these are individual runners into the slip collector. It's so, an, it, it is a nightmare of a job. Oh, Even just absolutely. doing plugs on these cars is a pain in the ass, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, you're dead right. So these do make the job a hell of a lot better. And I mean, stainless, TIG welded, it doesn't get much nicer than that, does it? And these are pretty good price for, for what they are. Yeah, it's, um, it's basic, it's like a custom pipe, but it's something you can just ring up and order. Like it's a shelf item. Yeah. You really, we, there's nothing else around. This is it. Like if you want something, there's nothing really um, else off the shelf that we could find that could, um, that had any sort of decent primary, you know. In no, it. that's right. I mean, you were considering making some, but when we found these, no brainer. Really. Yeah, well, like, basically there was nothing else we found around that was gonna suit what we needed and yeah i was very reluctantly coming around to the idea that i might have had to make a set of pipes and any of you guys out there if you've ever made a set of headers it's a lot of work it really is <laughs> a lot of work and when you're dealing with a car that looks this nice that has paint as nice as this one as a fabricator that is honestly one of the last jobs you want to be doing is swinging bloody <laughs> yeah. pipes and stuff in it's really it's so this it's almost a godsend from the the competition engines guys um, yeah yeah and like i say good price they freighted them over quick um yeah highly recommend so if you do have xr to xy you want some big pipes um get in touch with those guys because these these are a really nice piece however these have also forced us into our first issue of the build so let's go back over to the engine and we'll show you what we're talking about all righty so 
We ran through this engine in the last video, but just as a quick recap, we've got a world block, 411 cubic inch Windsor V8 with Edelbrock, Victor Jr. CNC alloy heads uh, running an F1R protocharger. This thing's probably gonna make a fair amount of horsepower, probably sitting maybe somewhere around the 600 wheel horsepower, we estimate, but we don't know until we get there. But with that much steam coming out, we want a good flowing extractor. Now these are a two inch primary extractor. And if anyone from Edelbrock is watching, we just gotta ask you why, honestly why? This has given us our first headache of the build so far. And as you can see, if I was to put this extractor up to that port, it absolutely smothers it. So the issue that we've got here is a two inch primary pipe running on a two inch manifold bolt spacing. How ludicrous is that? It's not ideal, man. It is not an ideal situation. No, that's it. I mean, that means that the primary pipe is essentially occupying the same space as the bolt hole. Um, so yeah, it's literally two inch between the center of that hole to the center of that hole there, whereas this is a two inch primary pipe. So it just completely smothers it. You'd think that any aftermarket head would be for a performance engine that's gonna push some power. That sort of bolt spacing is gonna limit you to a pretty small primary pipe, like a really small primary pipe, even a one and three quarter inch. You'd be struggling to fit a bolt in with that sort of set up, wouldn't you? Like yeah, absolutely. That yeah. primary but pipe versus the flange, it's gonna be hard, so. Once you throw like a socket on and the bolt and everything, oh, like, it's to, just to me, yeah. like, look, from, from when I first looked at it, cause this was taped off when we got the engine, so we didn't allude to it early enough, you know, we could have hit this um, problem a bit earlier, but even just looking at how much meat, like, we're not Ford guys, so, you know, we're not full bottles on this stuff, but no. having that much meat between the bolt and the port really doesn't make much sense to me, but anyway. Yeah, uh, it is what it is. Anyway, if you had a set of AFR heads, um, you can get them with both, it has both of them. So you've got a two inch and a three inch bolt spacing. The bolt holes end up being right next to each other. This flange here has a three inch bolt spacing. So. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't gone all out and bought a set of AFR heads, um, but what we do need to do is we need to take these Edelbrock heads off. We're gonna take them to Galloway engines and they are going to machine the three inch bolt spacing holes so that we can fit these pipes on. So I guess first job, Kay Fizzy, let's get these heads off. Yes, let's do it.
Right, oh, so it's been a couple of weeks and we've got the heads back from the machine shop. Galloway Engine's done a pretty sweet job. Ended up being a bit more work than simply drilling and tapping holes. Um, but no, they did a great job. Pretty decent turnaround in a couple of weeks and I got this thing screwed together last night over a couple of tins. Unfortunately, Kurt's back at work at the moment, um, but Michael, the bloke who actually owns this car, is going to come around a little bit later on this afternoon and give me a hand to sit this and the gearbox in the car um, so that we can get a feel for how much space we got, especially with that supercharger once that's bolted off onto the side and um, see what we're working with. So, I'll give you a quick look at these heads and um, then we'll slip it in. What do you reckon? Alright, so here's what we had to do in the end. Um, you can see here we've got the original 2 inch bolt spacing holes there that have been filled in with the new 3 inch um, bolt spacing holes there to accept um, our exhaust flange. So what we also didn't realise before, I've got this exhaust run here. If we sat that on there, not only did the bolt holes not line up, but the top of this flange, this flat milled section only went to about here and ran all the way across. Um, so when that exhaust primary is sitting on there, half of the flange, or more than half of the flange, was actually sitting off the flat section. So wouldn't have had a great seal. Um, so as well as drilling and tapping these holes for us, putting these studs in and milling it all flat. Galloway's has also TIG welded this extra rail on the top um, and milled the whole section flat for us. So a little bit more work than what we first thought, but it, um, it did turn out pretty well. Uh, now that this has all been milled perfectly flat and these have got individual runners, sit these on the linear shirt, we're actually not gonna use a gasket. So use a bit of red RTV, That'll also help to fill just this, this small uh, sort of chamfer or countersink, I guess it'll be, um, around these studs. Seal it up real nice, should be, should be good as gold. These, a couple of these holes though, they did go through to water. Um, we kind of expected it. There's not really much you can do, um, but what we're gonna do is we use an ARP exhaust uh, stud. So we'll put the stud in with a bit of sealant once the stud is in, it'll never have to come out again. So that means we won't disturb the water jacket or whatever. Uh, we'll literally just slip the exhaust on and off the stud. The studs will stay put. Um, those will be secured with the ARP 12 point nut. But um, yeah, pretty stoked with how it came out. It's gonna work perfect for what we need. Why the Edelbrock heads didn't have this dual hole set up Kind of like what AFR do from the start, I don't know, um, but it's done now so we can get cracking. So hopefully Michael will be here real shortly and um, we'll get to work sticking this in the Falcon. Let's do it. I was like, why is it dragging? It's because there was a nut. The nut that you dropped. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we got some rain happening and we're using the 
Transjack 8000, aka the roll box. Michael's just got to disconnect the handbrake. These have a cable brake which doesn't clear the tail housing. So, uh, now that that's done, we can lower the car down onto the box. Sick. She's sitting in there, in there like swimwear. That actually went pretty well, don't you reckon, Michael? No. No? <laughs> went in uh, nice and easy. The um, rod shop engine mounts and cross member for the gearbox actually worked out mint. Um, didn't give us any hassles at all, so pretty stoked with that. But now, it's time for the important part, Michael. I'm gonna put your supercharger on. Yeah, buddy. The big expensive part. Yeah, buddy. That's the bit that's gonna make the power. Let's uh, stick that bad boy on. See what clearance we have. That is the Instagram finished picture of the build. So, as you saw before, I had to take the rocket cover off. So the blower, when it sits in the bracket, it fouls on the rocket cover, which isn't a big deal. Um, you can see there's plenty of room. Let's get around here. There's plenty of room there between the impeller and the rocker itself. So we'll be able to notch the rocket cover. The bigger issue is that the blower actually hits the bonnet. So that's a that's about as far as we've got. That's obviously just sprung up a little bit more there. But we are pretty close. What happens next? Well, we've got to do a little bit of research. We've got to figure out, is that bracket going to do what we need it to do? I don't think they do another bracket. There is another brand, DNA does one. I'm not sure if that's even gonna help our situation either. Um, what else might we need to do? Well, we might need to lower the engine down a little bit. There is a little bit of room down here. Don't know if you can probably see that on the video, but it's probably about 25, 30 mil between the sump and the subframe, so um, we may be able to shorten the engine mount slightly and gain a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, we need to do a little bit more research. I was really hoping this was just going to bolt in and work. Um, I was hoping that after this was done, the next step would be start measuring up our intake situation, um, tail shaft, 
and start getting the fuel system underway. But unfortunately, not quite so simple. Always a bolt-on kit issue. That's just how it is. But as it is, the engine was gonna have to come out again anyway. Um, so it's no great loss, but yeah, it's just an extra step that I was hoping that we wouldn't have to put up with. So thanks for watching. As I say, it is what it is and we'll have to move on from here, but um, make sure hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode and we will tackle the next issue here on the XY prints. But thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.